How's it going? It's Ricardo the Barber. I'm going to show you in this video how to do a regular haircut. Um, my client here has scissors on top uh, and he has a number three on the sides. Um, so starting off, I'm going to be using my three guard to go all the way around the head and um, put my guideline in there. Just uh, going up and scooping out just to uh, not make any hard lines basically trying to clean up around his head to get all the hair around his neck and, and his sides uh, clean it up as good as possible so I uh, just continue that all the way around the head where I want the actual fade to be at in his case it's somewhere around a, like a mid fade um, typical area so here I pretty much got all around his head so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go straight to the scissor work. All right. Typically wet the client's hair before you use scissors. Um, right now he's probably getting around two fingers worth, so somewhere around like an eight. So I'm gonna go through his whole hair, cut it all the same length. cross cross cut it just clean it up it's a good way to double check how good you uh you know you cut your hair in the first place get all the high spots so now uh, I got a number four guard on here I have it open so it's a four and a half and I'm just scooping up and out and uh, trying to get all the uh, extra weight from the side of his head cut it right off so um, I'm also closing this blade so this way it goes straight to a four all right now I put a three on there and uh, I want it to be a three and a half so I keep it open I blend into the four that I just had and mind you uh, he does have a three in a size so I'm just gonna work with this until this three is closed so I'll probably do three open three midway and then three closed just to knock out that you know if there is any line and I'm gonna basically continue and do the same thing on his other side so here I'm using a four and a half comb in the hair as I'm as I'm uh, cutting it this way I you know I cut against the grain I could see the fade as it's coming in so work yourself you know to the back of the head as you're closing the blade going from four and a half back to a four so when you're done with that um, you're basically gonna do the same thing with your three guard all right which I'm doing here I got a three guard on there it's open knocking the hair down a bit closing it as I'm fading down uh, and I, I fade down some people fade upwards uh, it, it depends on your style I like to fade down because it's easier to not raise a blend um, you know if you make a mistake when you're fading upwards you know, it could cost you um, so I try to just do it the safe way or at least what way works better with me so here I am on the back of the head doing the same thing four open four close put a three back on there have it open uh, blend it down now you can cut this hair you can blend it into the top a, a number of ways this way I'm just showing you because it's probably the most typical way you can put it between your fingers um, the way I like to do it is is with the comb I like to just blend it up you know let the scissors do the work um, you know blend it in slowly as I'm moving the comb and that's the, it's the way that works good with me you know there's just plenty of different ways to do it um, it's just the way that I, I prefer so as you can see it's all coming together it's all blended in pretty well same thing on the other side uh, it's gonna be the same thing in the back no different you're gonna get all around the head um, and just be careful make sure you you put the uh, your actual comb tilted outwards so this way you're not cutting too much hair off uh, the tilting out helps you get just the ends that, that happen to be too long uh, and let you shorten them up pretty good so as you can see the blends coming together even though it's all long hair Keep combing it down just to get all the old uh, any hair you cut get it out the way make sure it's not you know screwing you up I like to comb my hair or brush the hair as I'm doing the fade the whole time okay so from here on we're gonna do the shape up in the back um, my client likes a straight line he doesn't like you know he doesn't like the uh, 
the super crispy look. He likes to just have his lines done up nice and finished. So, uh, you know, you just make, make sure you go straight across the back. Um, it's good to get, you know, if, if you put your head down to where their neck is and you look, you'll be able to see a better, a better uh, you know, view of what you're doing. So make sure that line's straight. From there, then you can go up around the ear. Uh, basically, it's just a box, you know, squaring it. Um, in a lot of cases, uh, you know, you don't want to hold that trimmer blade on the neck too much because it can hurt the client. Uh, I don't care how good you got that thing zero gapped. If you're if you're around tender areas, it's going to hurt if you're there too long. It's going to get red. Uh, it's going to happen. You know, there's no way to really um, change that unless you flip the blade around and, and then use the back of the blade. So here I'm just cleaning around the ears. You want to make sure you get get there good. I try to brush the hair out so this way it can expose everything that I need to cut. And then again, make your cut. All right. Um, sometimes you got to move the ear. When I'm left-handed, so... When, when I need to do uh, the person's left side, I, I use my, my pointer. Um, it'll probably take a little bit of practice to learn like that, but you could use your pinky on your right hand too, if that's the case. I mean, for you right-handed, it's just backwards. So just make sure the air is nice and clean. Um, he's keeping his beard. So, you know, while I'm there, I might as well just finish up that line, which is what you see me doing here. I'll just continue it down where he wants it. Now it flows nice and smooth. So basically, I'm moving back on to the other side. So uh, same same way the other side was. Just block that thing up. Come around the air. Uh, try to make as little contact as possible with your trimmers whenever you're around someone's neck. Uh, you know, not that you're always going to hurt them because your blade should be set fine. Um, but, you know, it's a good habit to, uh, to get into it because sooner or later, you know, you're going to get somebody with some real sensitive skin. And yeah, they're going to be real red and burning. So back around the ear, keep it nice and clean. I'm doing the same technique as I, as I did on the other side, no different. Um, in this case, I'm just pulling his ear down with, with uh, my other hand. There's no way I could do it with one hand on, on this side. Brushing the hair to expose all the, all the pieces that I need to cut, continuing it down. All right. I'm going against the grain just this you know less contact on his skin so here um, I make sure don't forget whenever you're cutting certain parts on a client's face or, or anywhere in the haircut you got to remember the client can move you shouldn't be ducking down or straining yourself to get to a certain part the client can always move all you got to do is position them where you need them so in this case you know I, I, I put the seat up higher I make sure he's sitting back in the chair all the way and then I have him tilt his head this way I can get where I need to get and he gets a better haircut. I don't have to worry about trying to, uh, you know, having a problem trying to get where I need to get. So here I am using the back of the blade again. Uh, this way there's less contact with the moving part of the blade. And you don't get irritated and, and hurt from it. So let's continue the same thing on the other side. Uh, when you're, you get them as even as you can. And, and the way I like to do it is when I'm done, I'll, I'll look at him straight on. I'll have him lift his head up. And I'll say, uh, you know, basically stay like that. I'll see where I need to adjust. I'll, I'll cut both sides, connect it to the middle, and make sure it's a perfect straight line going across. Um, and that's big. You want to do that before you do any kind of shaping above. So this way you know everything's symmetrical and it's the same on both sides. You don't want to just be screwing stuff up. Again, the back of the blade. Keep as least amount of contact with the moving blade. So this way you don't irritate any, any skin. Okay, so I did connect it. I didn't have it in the video. Basically here, um, he doesn't like me messing with his shape up too much. I'll just lightly touch uh, what he does have done already and um, connect it up to his sideburns. But I will not do his front line. He doesn't really ha get that square shape up that, you know, um, other people do like. You know, he's a little more casual look. So I'm just connecting it here and going up to the top and continue the same thing on the other side. Um, you know, you want to make sure, you know, uh, either keep it natural or keep it to where they want it, you know, and, and keeping the rest natural. So in his case, you know, near the temple area is going to be where it's supposed to be. He likes them a little thinner than what he has, not too, not too, uh, too wide. So, you know, I'll take a little bit off in this case, uh, but not too much. 
So that's what you see me doing here. Um, I did use the razor. I forgot to videotape it. So you won't see me doing the razor, whereas, you know, the more important part is learning how to do the regular haircut and the techniques involved. So um, the razor's already done here in this uh, portion. So what I'm doing is I'm cleaning up the rest of the neck. This client does not like the razor on his neck. And uh, I don't have... Um, you know, I would use a uh, the heated towels, but I don't have the heat the, that machine that heats up the towels. So um, this guy is satisfied with using just the uh, shaver. So I use the shaver on him, and then at the end I clean up the uh, rest of his neck, and uh, you know, basically that that summed it up. Um, you see, you know, again, nice and easy on the neck. Make sure uh, a lot of the time, sometimes they could have little moles and, and stuff on the back of the neck. You gotta be careful because uh, you don't want to cut one of them. Sometimes they could they could bleed, um, you know, and and, and not stop. <laughs> that you don't want. You don't want to cut the guy. Um, so basically, I'm, I'm you know I already know him because I've cut his hair for a couple years now. So he had no problem with me just going straight with a razor blade. Here I am touching up his eyebrows. Um, he typically likes me to do that. There's no need to use the trimmers beforehand. I like to go straight in with the uh, blade. Um, as long as you know what you're doing and you're careful, it, it shouldn't be a problem, um, really ever. You know, a lot of people don't like using the blade on uh, eyebrows, but if you know what you're doing, you're good. So, uh, basically, lightly touching both sides. I keep them the same, and you know, in some cases, somebody might want you to do them real thin, whereas here he just likes them cleaned up. So that's that's all I'm doing. Um, so, you know, I'm basically making his one eyebrow that he had, and I'm making it to two because he had a lot of hair in between them. Um, hair, you know, lightly t uh, cleaning up all the longer hairs, keeping it all the same length. So this way later on when he, you know, he might gel his hair up, at least, it, you know, you won't see any long hairs coming out. And that pretty much concludes it. Um, here's a few pictures to uh, show the final results. So I hope you guys like it. Um, throw me a comment. Um, subscribe if you aren't subscribed yet. Uh, and I'll definitely get back to you, though. All right? Thanks for watching, guys.